Hello everyone, Dustin Lee here with RSA to cover endpoint policies and groups in a two-part series for the NetWitness endpoint agent configuration. Today we're going to look at the policies aspect of our endpoint sources. So I've navigated over to admin within our console, endpoint sources, and policies. Now in getting into the policies, we'll see where we have three default examples of policies that are out of the box with NetWitness. The first one being an endpoint detection and response policy, the next one being a file policy, and the third or last one being a Windows policy. Now policies can be thought of as configuration templates that are applied to groups of assets based upon the desired options that a organization would like to have. The three options that we have are referenced here. Now file policy, which we'll look at later, can aid in collecting files that may reside on the disk or hard drive of an asset, but that, that aren't necessarily part of the operating system's logging facility, be it syslog or a Windows event channel. For example, these could be Apache web logs, Microsoft Exchange logs, and even Windows DNS debug logs. Now the Windows logging component, that enables the ability to ship logs published to an event channel from a Windows client or server into NetWitness via the endpoint agent. These can be your standard top three logs like application, system, and security, or even custom event channels and paths. Uh, but we'll cover both of these later on in our series. Today I'm going to create a new policy that allows us the ability to specify granular options to deploy as part of a group of assets which we'll cover on the next video. So I'm going to create a new policy I'm going to identify this as an endpoint policy and not files or Windows logs. I'm going to name it Lab Assets Endpoint. I'll click Next, and this will present the ability to define the policy with all of the available settings that we have within our NetWitness interface. By selecting these particular options, you'll see where uh, the ones under Scan Schedule are subdued, or you cannot select those. It's because we actually have our Scheduled Scan disabled, so I'm going to enable that and you'll see where the other options now present themselves. And I can enable a schedule scan based on a specific date with a specific frequency if I want that to be days or weeks and the periodicity between those particular scans. The start time. I can define the CPU minimum and maximum. If that is a bare metal host or if it's a virtual machine, we can set the priority for those particular uh, assets. Next, I can select my agent mode. Uh, our monitoring modes that we have are insights or advanced. And the difference there is with insights, you'll get the scan data such as auto runs, drivers, files, libraries, and system info from the agents as it's running. Our event stream analysis and application rules on the back end, you can view the status of a file and you can use the relay server. With advanced, you get that plus more options, the ability to download a master file table, dump processes, or an entire system dump. You get process tree visualization, network isolation, so you can actually isolate the host from the network. If you're so inclined, only allowing it to talk to NetWitness and a few other IP addresses that you may specify for scans or remediation or incident response. You get the ability to block malicious files. You get the analysis of files that are downloaded. So I'm going to select advanced here, uh, and then I'll go through the next options. I can scan my master boot record on my devices as they come in uh, and during those periodic scans. So I'm going to select that. I can automatically scan new hosts whenever they communicate with my endpoint server. So I'm going to enable that as well. You get the ability to automatically download files based upon certain criteria, and those criteria would be you can exclude all digitally signed binaries so they won't be downloaded, or you could just specify Microsoft and Apple and just exclude those particular binaries by downloading uh, others, or you could just include all binaries if you wanted to. For the purposes of this particular policy in this example, I'm just going to exclude Microsoft and Apple signed binaries. I'm going to keep my file size limit to one meg. Keep in mind that the larger the files that you download, the more hard drive space, the more resources that's going to use on your endpoint server. Now I have my options for response actions. I can enable blocking. So if I have a file within my enterprise that is malicious or known bad, then that file can be blocked from running on the endpoint. I can enable network isolation, where if I just simply click 
in, in the menu and want to isolate that particular host as I previously covered, you could have that enabled as well. So I'm just going to enable both of these as part of my policy. The rest of the selection is typically just based on your environment. So if I needed to define an endpoint server, I would select that. And I only have one endpoint server within my environment, but you could have multiple endpoint servers to select from. And this may be based on region or geographic location. Uh, so you could separate them based on a deployment strategy like on-prem versus cloud or even multi-cloud or just customize it to fit whatever the organization's decision may be. And you can also specify an endpoint server forwarder either by a, an IP address that is directly accessible from elsewhere in the network or a fully qualified domain name. This, this can be useful in times of network address translation or other specific network needs uh, that allow you the ability to not only just use the host name or the IP address that is dedicated to that particular endpoint server, but also to specify one that may be mapped and translated throughout your network. From there, we can define our HTTPS port if you wanted to go on something that was non-standard. You can define your beacon interval by increasing or decreasing this value. We also have a UDP communication mechanism, and we could specify not only the port there, but also the UDP beacon interval. And last but not least, we have the advanced settings menu or options. This is typically reserved for RSA support with the ability to have complex configurations that don't necessarily fit within the default deployment methods. Now, as I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and publish this policy. If I didn't want to publish it, if I just wanted to save it, and close it, and come back to it later without it being available, I would click save and close, but I am happy with my policy. I will go ahead and publish that, and we'll see where it's available, it's published, but it's not yet applied to any groups. In the next video, we'll go ahead and create a group so that we can apply this assets endpoint policy to those particular endpoints. Thank you.